Howdy folks, how's it going? I love the fact that there's, there's, there's a little uh, center console here so you can't see my tummy. <laughs> so yes, I'm driving the uh, Proton that um, I don't really like. But uh, you know what? And I've done a video of this, you can actually check. Uh, the title is the Proton I hate most. But credit where credit's due, I have actually used this car quite a few times uh, when my car goes into uh, Procast. And the powertrain and the aircon is all just amazing. Uh, the car is falling apart inside because it's a, it's a spare car. But uh, other than that, it just drives really well. Um, I've got the GoPro jammed between the door and the seat. So I don't know what you're seeing right now. I hope you can actually see a little bit of me. But uh, hopefully the wide angle, wide angle lens thing is working. And uh, I'm off to go pick up the uh, brake wagon. This was the characteristic of this of this model. They made the car, they, they made the exhaust very uh, boomy. But the aircon is on, the windows are up, the power windows actually work, which is great. Uh, but you still get that little bit, you know, it's, it, it works, but it's, it's not perfect. And uh, those with this, with this Proton model, of course, you probably know it as the LMST. Uh, if you can find an LMSS, that's better. This one before the LMST, T before, uh, S before T. But this is the LMST, and um, a little bit of background, Proton wanted to a car that was uh, cheap and cheerful and also kind of um, reminiscent of, of a Lotus Elise and you will you will notice that in the uh, instrument cluster and also the uh, the whole dashboard you know the round aircon vents the very small motorbike like uh, instrument cluster but with a white background so yeah they tried to create this car to make this car a little bit sporty and uh, because of that they gave it a very boomy exhaust now on paper, the design must have looked really, really good. Three-spoke steering wheel, round aircon vents, uh, bloody good aircon. Like, this aircon is like better than some of my own cars. Uh, they gave it power steering because if you remember my Saga, uh, which is not that much older than this car, my Saga didn't have power steering when it was standard. And uh, so they gave it power steering. It's very easy to use. The only thing uh, insofar as uh, failing was was the execution and the uh, component materials used you know it's, it's 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 very 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 i mean this this door card or rather all four door cards are one solid piece of plastic the whole thing is just hard plastic sorry and uh, granted granted they wanted this car to be inexpensive but it was still what upwards of 30,000 ringgit they were not giving this car away for free anymore like buy one get one free or um, you know five thousand ringgit and uh, but it did come with warranty it did come with uh, with a mileage warranty and, and uh, 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 maintenance I, I think I can't, I can't remember those who bought one new please let me know what kind of warranty came in this car I think it was uh, three years hundred thousand or maybe less but as I said now the execution was was uh, somewhat left wanting in so far as the component materials were concerned but also with the Lotus Elise, you're, you're very, you know, tucked in, you're very uh, close to the steering wheel, you're very close to the dashboard, everything is surrounding you, you're in a sports car, you know, it's almost like a Lotus Elise, like a go-kart for the road, a street legal go-kart. So, let me turn the aircon down because I think, I think you won't be able to hear me if I don't. The aircon is really, really good. And, you know, the shifts are so smooth. Oh man, I, I'll be honest with you, the, this car shifts better than my Saga, despite the fact that I've spent oodles of money on the Saga. What was I saying? Yeah. So when you're all closed up and then you're like a little go-kart, everything is supposed to be close to you, that's why the small instrument cluster works. Here, it doesn't work. I can't see the numbers. I can't see the little the little digital um, gauges that, that show me my how much fuel I have left, whether the engine's overheating, stuff like that. So we're almost here. And uh, this car, as much as I do not like it, this car has actually served its owner really well. Of course, he's got a better car now, but it has served its owner really well in so far as being a spare runaround car is concerned. Really, really. So credit where credit's due, Mitsubishi, thank you very much for providing the powertrain for this car. Uh, it still drives really well. I don't remember when was the last time I this car was serviced. I know I did a little DIY check on it myself, uh, and it was it was lacking.
putting a liter of oil in the engine but it's still running it's still running it's still going strong and uh, you know what what else what else can you say what else can you say i mean it's as insofar as a a ppg car is concerned what what else do you want this is i mean it's fully paid up of course and uh, it's just running so well thanks to this this wonderful mitsubishi powertrain but almost everything else about it is just kind of falling to bits really but uh, why am i here okay well, i'm here because i see the uh, brake wagon outside already yes we are here at Procast. let me get this out and uh, let's go have a look okay so there's Procast. oh there's an sm4 here nice nice little sm4 so i'm here at Procast because the um the uh, brick wagon's done. I've done i'm doing a couple of things to the brick wagon i'm very excited to show you what it is the uh, brick wagon has now gotten itself a rear view camera thanks to Baldwin. Baldwin pulled out a rear view camera from one of his cars and he didn't want to use it anymore so he passed it over to me it's one of those cameras that actually hide in the um in the rear view mirror uh the inside rear view mirror of the car so let's go see and oh yeah i put um i put back my uh my or my existing horns inside the car because the one that that uh ken gave me the old school one i gotta pass it back to him it uh, it stopped working and uh it, it was getting rusty and it's too nice it's too too nice yeah i know although these are, the, are an option right now i still use them yeah outside and of course especially when indoors which is the new norm so hey nice 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 sm4 so there's the brick wagon very very cool let's go i almost took this home the other day so there's the brick wagon folks uh, hey hey chosan 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 so okay she's locked so let's go get the key right we are here at Procas. so you need any uh, number plates made come on over yeah i see my volvo i see my volvo key here Go ahead and look. <sighs> My trusty Volvo. Uh, let him settle this customer first. Yes, there's the brick wagon. So here we go. Hello, lovely. Yes, I always greet my cars that way when I get in. So there we go. There's the uh, there's the reverse camera now. Yep. So it's, it's a lot bigger too. Let's see. If, let's hope she works. Since you're still here, let's check it out. Yes, there we go. So he has uh, mounted the camera right next to the third brake light. Okay, and that's what it looks like. A bit of glare there. Oh, this. Wait a minute. I see a front camera as well. Is that a front camera? Because that's the uh, image from there. Yeah, that's my rear camera. And that's front. What happens when I put it in reverse? Let's see. Ah, when I go into reverse, it's full rear. Great. Yeah, see, I, I didn't want a full panoramic background uh, for the camera. I just wanted to see where my rear end ends because this car does not have reverse sensors. We tried putting reverse sensors last time. <laughs> There's a big piece of bussy at the back there, which they could not, which they could not uh, get through. Right, okay, good, 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 good. Let's go see where they mounted it. So you see, under this cover is solid bussy. Right, right. Let's see, let's see. Now the car needs a wash. Ah, there it is. There it is, right there, underneath the third brake light. Very smart. Clever, clever, clever. Cool beans. Okay. And so I've got a front camera as well, which is... Uh, behind if i'm not mistaken it's behind the rear view mirror yeah there it is 
it also doubles up as a dash cam. Nice. So thanks, Bowen. Very cool. Thank you very much. There we go. Oh, that's the old, uh, that's the old horn that Ken gave me. Guys, you won't believe it. This this horn is very heavy. I can I can barely car carry it with one hand, and it's from the '60s. It's a very very also solid metal horn. But sadly, because of our climate, it was all shiny brushed aluminum. Oh, sorry, brushed metal, polished metal, before when it was under when it was in the bonnet. But because of our crazy humidity and rain and wetness and everything, it got very very tarnished. Very sayang lah to, to actually use, nah, that's the rust. So I gotta get this polished up and I'm probably gonna pass it back to Ken. Um, he can put it in his showcase. This thing, this thing is in, belongs in a showcase. Fantastic, really, really fantastic. Okay, so that's it folks. Just a quick update on the Saga that I use as a spare car when I come to Prokas and the brick wagon. Lovely, lovely. Thanks for joining me on this. Thank you for watching. Take care, y'all. Stay safe. Be cool. And I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.